all, welcome to the blending mode class at Hummies World. And if you've missed all of the videos before this one, you might want to go back and start at the beginning. But we are working on the linear dodge uh, blending mode and we've gone through all of the darken blending modes and we're working through the lighten blending modes and the light ones i think are a lot of fun i i tend to use them a lot we are on the linear dodge add and now there's a reason why that word add is in there um as we reviewed with the the color dodge dodge has to do with uh, the term that is used for the the burning and the dodging tools dot the dodge tool <coughs> makes things slightly lighter hence the linear dodge is going to make things lighter but the I always always thought it was odd that it had the word add in there but as we've talked with all of these, talked to you about with all of these previous uh, blending modes, it's all about the math. And the math in this one is all about sums. So it is all about adding. So uh, the sum that linear dodge results for each little pixel is the sums it sums the value of the two layers and that's it in most of the others we've had some multiplying and dividing in this one it just adds the value of the two layers so blending with white makes white that's huge um, huge to remember with this one so anywhere there's white in your either layer you're going to get white um, Blending mode with black makes no change. And so that's another huge thing to remember when using the linear dodge. Uh, that it, That's what makes this one a little bit different than the others. Um, let's go ahead and do a little bit of the math with this one. We don't actually do the math with all the blending mode lessons, but we're going to, to do a little thinking on this one. So here's our graphic that we have been working with. And as we've learned in the past, uh, black is zero. Um, because when we uh, look at black, it's got zero right here in the color picker. And white is 255 down here in the RGB. So well, those are the easier colors to um, do the math with. So uh, if we think about this, it's going to add up the two layers. And so if we add zero, the, the zero of black, to the colors of the green, the number of the green in the background, we don't even need to know the number to think of this. Zero plus whatever number that is equals no change. So if you have black in your texture layer, Wherever that black is, it's going to make no change in your uh, image. However, white, if you add 255 with anything else, it's going to go over 255, but there's no colors over 255. So there is no, um, you know, 255 plus a color of 4. The, the, it's so it maxes out at white so anything that adds up to 255 or more is going to show up as white um, and so this one's going to get uh, really if you want really want a lot of white or a lot of softening in your layouts or in your image that you're working with um, definitely layouts listen to me you can tell I'm a digital scrapbooker I'm actually going to try to go back and use these while the course is going on with my layouts right now I'm just doing images and I think I might go back and try to put them in my layouts and use them as samples ah, totally sidetracked 
So let's go up here to our graphic layer and see what happens when we add linear dodge. And you're going to see, oh, this whole half over here, everything adds up to more than 255. So it just turns white. So that's really important um, when using the linear dodge to, uh, to know. And then um, we do have some nice gradual change all the way down into the no change. But look at even the 50% the, uh, gray. It's, it's almost white. So use that knowledge um, in selecting your textures. So let's look at what I did with this. And we'll learn. Um, I'll give you my steps that I made to make this. Um, so that you have some tips and even some more ideas. I'm trying to come up with more ideas as we do these uh, uh, do these samples so that you um, can do them in your layouts if you want. Um, remember, we're only using the texture I provide and we are only using the color dodge not the color dodge, the linear dodge add blending mode. After we go through all the blending modes, we're going to be uh, doing uh, a mixing them. And so, uh, but we want to see um, and compare how this affects each other and look at what, what each other arrives at uh, so um, we can see how this particular blending mode works. That's why we're sticking with the, the same blending mode. And I have been saying that on every lesson, but I just want to reinforce it. So um, here is actually my original photo of some grapes. I do like to go to wineries. And I did nothing with it. Normally, I like to make them pop, but this is straight out of the, the camera. And it didn't fill in my entire area. So I have this layer where I used the content aware and I created it and it made this image. And uh, I thought that turned out perfect um, because it allowed uh, room for my text. And now actually when I created this text, I created it with the overlay over it. Right now the colors look funky. I would have never chose these colors, but with the overlay, uh, texture overlay and the, the blending mode, it changes the color of the text too. So um, yeah, I, I actually created it with my uh, texture layer. So let's look at the texture layer and there's what it does. That's how it makes it cool. But let's look at it normally. So this is the, uh, oh, I've also got my opacity down to 77. <laughs> this is the fun uh, texture, yummy, as we keep saying. They are just, they're just yummy. If you get into this, you just look at the, these textures with all these little thingies in them and you, ooh, you just yummy, yummy. So uh, you can see there's a, actually this texture when it was made, it was is a whole bunch of little bitty uh, different colored squares were glued down on a piece of paper. Uh, you can see them all in there. And then a uh, paint, variety of paint was uh, sprayed over it or painted over it and so it's just kind of yummy so I'm gonna hit the uh, undo key so we could go back to the this um, let's just reconstruct it I'm gonna copy this ah you can see how it made it even wider and uh, let's uh, go back to our normal and our normal Okay, so I have, I'm going to reconstruct these three layers here. So I have this texture and I'm going to add the linear dodge add. And you can see how just yummy it made it. But I kind of felt it made it too uh, bright. I, at first I thought this was fine. But um, later I went ahead and I lowered the opacity. And even just 
let's see, up here around 66. See, look at the before and after. Look at how yummy that makes it, even just at that. Uh, but I think I said I stopped around 77. I mean, I could have gone all the way up. It's kind of cool, too. But you can see this texture has a lot of uh, kind of black and uh it's it's not a total black it's a, a grayscale like a, a very uh, almost black but not quite all the way black so it has just enough in there to uh, create all of this uh, yumminess that we have going on oh look at the lines and and it almost looks painted the lines are from all of the uh, little pieces of edges of the pieces of the paper um, because the the shadows that were created on the edges of the piece of paper are black and so then they make all the yummy lines um, anyway it just works out well uh, and then um, I did I replicated a technique that we used in uh, the last lesson and, um, and I took it a step further and so I have grabbed my rounded rectangular tool this time I was at 118 for my radius so I really made some nice rounded corners and uh, this is the same steps that we did in the last one I rasterized it or simplify it if you are in the Photoshop elements and then I got my magic wand tool, selected the area outside of the shape, and then I can make my shape layer invisible. I'm not using it anymore. You can see I still have marching ants, and I could have lined that up more perfectly, but I kind of like it just random. Um, I, it could have been centered more is what I'm saying, because you see this space over here isn't as big as this space, but actually I kind of like it. Uh, the whole that's the whole idea of this it's just kind of random and not perfect um, then I uh, uh, I probably should have done this already let's see what happens create a new layer oh I'm sorry drag this to create a new layer and oh I guess I was okay with it and uh, then I simply you could do that before you get the selection but then I simply did create layer mask and we're gonna look at this again I'm gonna hold down my alt key and click on the layer mask and we can see white around the edges and black in the center white reveals black conceals so where the black is our texture is not going to be showing and where the white is our texture is going to be showing Let's go back. And so this is where we ended with the last uh, lesson. But for this one, I went ahead, held down my shift key so I could keep things proportionate and just drug in each of the corners. Now remember the color, the linear dodge add blending mode is still applied to this. So that's what's making it really yummy so now I have some of the original darker color around the outside and then I have this frame that I'm working with and um, uh, I decided that that was also too um, bright and so I lowered the opacity on that till I got something cool and yummy and then I actually added a very low drop shadow now remember when you're doing this this is uh, below your uh, or is uh, part of your texture and so it's gonna kind of get yummy blended also anyway that's what I did to arrive at that and I thought it was pretty cool so if we take off these that we made and we go back to my original three uh, where are my original three layers original three layers there was my final that that I came up with for this and uh, um, actually it's two layers I guess um, 
original photo, add the one texture layer with 77% opacity, <coughs> and then add the frame, and I was at 58% opacity. So it doesn't matter. Just do it until you, you go, oh, yeah, that's yummy. That's so cool. I love it. And you get that artistic high, and then you want to just share it with everybody, and I can't wait to see what you share with us.